Welcome back. I'm the Missing Wing. If you're new here, then welcome to my channel. This is part two of a series. Grab the playlist called My Experience with Crypto Mining, if you want to start at the beginning. A brief recap. This series is about my experiment. Definitely an experiment, because uh, I know nothing much about this topic yet. I'm learning slowly. I'm learning. It's about my experiment with crypto mining, specifically my experiences in trying to make real money or maybe I should say real coin, having started as an absolute novice, a crypto virgin, if you like. Hmm, where to start, where to start? The usual technique, I guess. Positive news up front, bad news in the middle, and end on a high note. Yes, yeah, it's often called a shit sandwich, typically used for staff performance appraisals. So but let's start positively. Yay, I've been mining with nice hash. And yay, yes, I've made some money. Got my first balance transfer out of NiceHash into my Bitcoin wallet on day 7. That would be Friday the 7th of July 2017. That was roughly 41 Australian dollars. But, 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 I cheated. Yes, I cheated. You see, it was very quickly evident that my G single GTX 1070 GPU wouldn't make enough money to bootstrap me into any chance of getting towards my target of $10,000 in a year. It was barely making me $3 a day. Three Australian dollars, that is, of course. So how did I cheat? Well, I've been using both my GTX 1070 and my beautiful EVGA GTX 1080 Ti for the Win 3 Elite White Edition. It's, the 1080 Ti has been achieving close to $7 a day. I don't yet know enough about mining to know why the 1080 Ti is doing so much better. The GPU's base specifications don't really support it, but it is really is doing so much better than the GTX 1070. I'll keep that investigation for later. Keep watching, I will investigate it eventually. Eventually. So, now, I need to talk a bit more about bootstrapping. What I'm trying to do here is use my early income from my existing tech without significant investment, the existing tech that's scattered about, to make enough money to allow me to buy more graphics cards. For example, if I'm making $10 a day now with my two cards, it'll take me 60 days to make the $600 I need to buy an additional graphics card. Yeah, that $600 Australian is the price for a 8 gigabyte GTX, sorry, 8 gigabyte RX 580, which is probably the type of card I'd buy. So anyway, um, 60 days to make $600 at $10 a day using two cards. If I then buy another card, I'm then making $15 a day. It'll take me 40 days to buy another card, and then it'll t that'll then be making me $20 a day, because I've now got four cards, so it takes 30 days to buy the next card, etc., etc., etc. Hopefully that's clear. Of course, the math is not quite so simple, really. To start with, it assumes that two graphics cards at $600 each can make me $10 a day. That's a very big assumption that has a lot of variables, as I'm rapidly discovering. I've just mentioned my target, $10,000. $10,000 in one year is just under $30 a day for 365 days of the year. Of course, being, like, being me, I like to look at things differently. I'd prefer to consider with bootstrapping, as I am, that I have six months to build up the daily income to be $60 a day. I build up to six months at $60 a day instead of 12 months at $30 a day. Using the previous math, that's something like 12 graphics cards, and I'm already learning the previous math won't hold, so it's more than 12 graphics cards. Let's just assume 20 or more cards for the moment. We'll talk about why in a later video. That also assumes that one graphics card at $600 will make me $5 a day. As I said before, a very big assumption with a lot of variables, as I just suggested. There is another issue with the logic above. If achievable, it will make my $10,000 before the end of the year. But to do that, I will need to have to spend about $7,000 at least on video cards in less than six months. 
and those cards must have paid for themselves in that time. And I haven't mentioned other costs yet, like power. Hmm. Let's look at my progress so far. A $41 payment on day 7. You should be able to see on the screen the spreadsheet that I'm building up of my income and expenses. We should start with a summary page. Hmm, but we can't. I haven't finished writing it yet. Please don't comment on my poor design method. Yes, I should start with what I want the outcome to look like. Haven't done that here. I've started with the input data. So let's look at the cash and purchases page. We start with my $1,000 stake. I've spent so far $37.45 on buying a power monitor. The power monitor looks like this. The power monitor is first is the first investment so that I can work out just how much power my PCs are drawing and therefore work out what my ongoing costs are. If I now open up the power consumption page, you will see what I needed to monitor for. I have the first PC running with a GTX 1070 drawing 200 watts. I also have my main PC, the one I don't want to be using, but I'm still using it, with a GTX 1080 and I drawing 390 watts when I'm using it for mining. Looking closely, you can see that the minor PC is costing about $5.33 a week to run 24 hours a day. I'll also be able to see the main PC is costing about $8.90 per week, running 18 hours a day. I use it for other stuff, like making these videos the rest of the time per day. In theory, I have $41 of income, although it's still sitting in Bitcoin. It's not real money yet. About $11 of power cost in the first week. Not a full week's cost, though. Um, $37.45 for the power meter, i.e. my total gain this week has been negative $7.37. That first $10,000 target is looking really scary already. Clearly I need to increase my income. I need to be planning to buy more graphics cards sooner rather than later but I also need to try other options. There are a couple of other options I'll talk about in the next couple of weeks, but first I'll focus on just one. In my research, I've come across this alternative crypto coin called Burst. It's based on using disk capacity, not graphics cards, to mine currency. From what I can see, I should be able to run both NiceHash and the Burst coin miner on the same PC at the same time as one uses the GPU, that's nice hash, and the other uses the CPU and disk, that's the burst coin miner. Most of what I can find on searching the web suggests that running both at the same time is actually viable. And I happen to have a few spare disk drives lying about. They are of variable ages, some of them are very low capacity, but there's quite a lot. I'm going to sort through them when I finish making this video and plug the rest of them in shortly, I think. Um, but I'll start with just two of the largest drives that I've already found. I have a WD Black 1 terabyte, which if you've got really good eyes, you might have spotted in the PC that I was uh, pulling apart last week in the last episode. And a WD Red 3 terabytes. I wasn't expecting to find the 3 terabyte drive in this mess, but I did. There was another 4 terabyte drive in that PC from last week, but I'm not using that just yet. Got to strip a little bit of data off it first. As you can see, I also have other drives available to use if Burst Coin is anything like profitable. We shall see. I also have an unused HP Microserver Gen 8 sitting in the corner over here, which you may notice. Would probably be an excellent device for Burst Coin mining if Burst is profitable, which is still an unanswered question. But I won't be using that yet because it never gets turned on. I will wait until Burst proves its value before I spend even more money on power bills. So to start with, I'm just sticking the one terabyte and three terabyte drives into the mining PC. Hmm. Time passes a little while later. I come back to this commentary. Well, I must say, Burst is nowhere near as much fun to set up as Nice Ash. What a mess, what a mess Burst is. Anyway, after a while, I finally got my wallet configured and started setting up the disk. 
That was nearly two days ago. The three terabyte disk hasn't finished initial data right yet. I'll come back to the burst opportunity next week, I guess. Can't talk about it anymore this week. Run out of time. So, day eight, end of week one. The 8th of July, 2017. I got $41 a Bitcoin in my wallet and a few other options to increase my income. This has sort of been challenging and interesting. It's also starting to get a bit exciting, but in a gambling addict sort of way. Anyway, $41 a Bitcoin in my wallet. What could possibly go wrong? Keep an eye out for next week's episode, complete with more income, I hope. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the flip side.